There's no chance in a restoration of the previous economy. It was already weak as it was, but this is just too much. We have seen tremendous weakness in 2020, only kept barely alive by a record level of stimulus, which cannot fix actual problems. As a result, we are looking at a decimation of the mom and pop shops, the consolidation of big corporations, and the rise of the remaining few. The economy will never be the same again you came here for the truth so let me unveil that for you today we're going to look at what's going on with the mom and pops we're talking about small businesses and how they have been impacted by the crisis of 2020. this has been going on of course before 2020 but right now it has just put the final nail in the coffin some businesses have been doing better than ever before if they are relying on let's say storefront traffic people to walk in and that's not allowed to happen because there are lockdowns or what have you of course this is going to be an issue now i need to make something very clear right here up front there is a very different big difference between the economy and the stock market these are not related when i say the stock market that refers to the stock market when i say the economy that's not the stock market please there are some out there who do not understand this and it is very important for us to actually make these two very different when we discuss them. Although they can actually influence each other in some ways sometimes, that's not what I'm talking about. When I look at the economy, I'm talking about the small businesses, I'm talking about the big businesses, I'm talking about actual jobs, and if there aren't any jobs, and what's happening with imports and exports and so on. Now those things can affect the revenue of different businesses and how the stock actually performs but when we talk about the two I know that they are very different and if you are a subscriber to this channel we know we are on the same page I just need to make that very clear up front so we're gonna talk about the small businesses the mom and pops we'll look at that a few examples I have for you I'll show you some images surrounding that then we're going to look at what's happening in the economy uh, as a you know looking at it from a let's say top-down view and then I want to touch on if I can a little bit with the financial indicators I got some new ones for you, so let's get into it right away. This is just one example here. It's talking about Atlantic City. If you are in Atlantic City or near the area, please let me know what you see in the comment section. I think it's important to share that information from people on the ground. If you are new to this channel, this is one very specific thing that I believe is different than others in that we are sharing information all over the world. If I'm talking about a particular issue, I ask the people to please post it in the comments and then we share that and we look learn from it because we can only get so much from the mainstream I have learned so much just from the comment section on my own channel it has been an excellent excellent source and that applies to literally all over the world so I appreciate that anyway city without a pulse 2020 has gutted the hospitality and live entertainment industries leaving desolation and economic destruction in its wake it sounds like a money GPS thing but it's right here in this article so they're saying the same thing and of course it's important to realize that some areas are doing so poorly right now and it's really unfortunate to see the impact on actual people in their daily lives the boardwalk is empty the beach is deserted and the casinos though partially open are limping into their fifth month of severely curtailed operations after four months of shutdowns this brings up the point how long can a business last with number one no revenue and then number two little revenue and there aren't many businesses that can sustain that that's why the small mom and pop shops sure they got a few bucks and that money gave them some more time but you still owe most of that back it depends on the situation is it a forgivable loan and so on well you're looking at a situation where many of these businesses won't be able to come back signs of the downturn abound the devastation is hardly unique to atlantic city but few places have fared worse than this historic resort turned gambling mecca 
this is the big news here, roughly one out of three workers were out of a job here in the late spring and early summer. That's huge. So we will have to look at how you know this really unfolds in 2021 because it might actually be at that same limit when you see so many individuals unable to find work they had to close down their business and maybe they're going to have to move elsewhere as a result at the bottom here they're just talking about how this and it's something that i mention all the time if this let's say casino closes down or the casino can't operate those people maybe they were going to go to that ice cream shop as they mentioned here maybe they were going to go to the sandwich place maybe they were going to go to all these different areas but now suddenly they don't have the money to do that they're not going to go see the movies they're not going to go buy shoes at the store and so all of those other businesses will be impacted by those losing their jobs at these other stores. So certainly, or I should say any business. So that right there just tells you that this has a domino or cascading effect that is surely to be felt for a long period of time. And I think with all the bankruptcies coming in 2021, it will be something very serious to watch. If you have the time, I would take a look at this article if you're interested. There are many pictures as well as a full description gets into a lot more detail here that I won't be able to touch on, but uh, you know, definitely check it out if you have the time. This right here is just showing you an example at the top of the food bank lineups at the bottom, just showing you what the workers had been doing. Here are more of the lineups and this has been going on all over the place. I just keep showing it to you because it's always a different place. And that tells me that it's not just one town or one city that is feeling the effects of this. It's coming all over the place. Now, surely food banks, if you looked at it, 2019, yes, there were food banks. Yes, people were using the food banks, but it's not the case where you had it anywhere near this. Every single stat I look at regarding this, it is shown a multiplication in the amount of people that are using this. Yes, they are in their vehicles. Those vehicles, maybe they're too expensive. Maybe they don't need this vehicle and they can rent the vehicle or maybe they could take the bus. I'm not judging what they're doing. What I'm saying in the current situation, I look at the economic aspect of this. When we notice what has happened, this ultimately affects the economy as a whole. That's the way I see it. People were in a job. They were getting paid this amount. They were able to afford their car. They could afford going to the restaurant. Maybe they were using debt to all of that. But anyway, regardless, the point is they were doing this. Now that's disrupted. And now they are basically waiting for something to change. And I think it's not going to be very good. This article here is talking about Denver. And again, it doesn't matter which area we look at. There are so many places that have been hit by this. And as you see in the quote down at the bottom here, there's no coming back from that. There's no coming back from that. And some businesses have had to shift, or as the new term everybody loves to use, pivot. And when you see businesses doing that successfully, it's fantastic. It's great because they could stay in business. They can operate. They can provide jobs. They can provide, ultimately, food for people to put on their tables. But for so many, they just couldn't do that for whatever reason, one reason or another. Maybe they were forced to shut down. They couldn't operate, not allowed to, or... Maybe, you know, there, there was something going on in, in their personal life. Who knows? All I'm showing you here is that you had another example in another place dealing with major problems that will impact the economy as a whole. Further along here in this article, I just want to note something. At least 100,000 small businesses nationwide have closed permanently, according to a Yelp analysis released in September. Many others are barely hanging on. And I believe those numbers there are really, really understated. Understand that the majority of businesses are small businesses. And that just shows you that if they are hurting, you are going to have problems for the foreseeable future. 
Despite federal ban, renters are still being evicted. If you have been evicted or know somebody that has, please let me know in the comments what is actually happening with you. Further along in this article out of the AP, essentially what they're saying is they've got the federal order in, people are still being evicted. And essentially looking at it, some judges in North Carolina and Missouri refused to accept the directive. Tenant advocates said the order had been applied inconsistently and some tenants who had no legal representation knew nothing about it. And landlords in several states also unsuccessfully sued to scrap the order arguing it was causing them financial hardship and infringing on their property rights. So there's more in here, but I'd like to know from you directly if you are seeing this. Of course, we've got problems all the way along the line. If that person, it's like you know a domino effect. If this person here is unable to actually pay their bills because their job here, their business was impacted. Now the business is gone or that business is reduced hours that has an impact on the person. Now this person here can't pay their bills or their or their rent, let's say, and that's going to take a hit. And then that has an impact on the lender and that will feel, you know, all, all the way back. I mean, you just, just take it all the way and you realize that, yeah, this is a problem and we have to acknowledge that. Hawaii seeks to be seen as a remote workplace with a view. I think they are very late on this, but hopefully that some places will be able to turn it around and will be the type of place that will be accepting to people under the conditions, certain conditions say that we are friendly to remote workers. Some of the islands had been doing this. I think it was a little too late for a lot of those islands anyway, but they need this because they're so heavily reliant on tourism. But this is kind of a different situation where people are working from home and they're able to just work from anywhere essentially as long as they can be on their computer. So this is going to be something that will probably be a big change uh, for the foreseeable future. All right, I saved the biggest news for this part of the video, and let's hope that you're still here watching. Not many do. A third. Now, I had to double check this, but I mean, it's shocking. Shocking. One third of small businesses in New Jersey have closed down in 2020, according to a report from the Star Ledger newspaper. It's really bad, and without federal dollars coming into New Jersey, the Main Street stores and other establishments are not going to make it through the winter. My goodness, one third of businesses. We're talking about small businesses, but that is a big chunk of them. I know we know that there is Best Buy, and there is Amazon, and there are all of these big corporations. But what about the small businesses? People tend to drive right by. There might be a hair salon, there might be a baker, there might be anything, okay? Small businesses, they employ one person, maybe they employ four people, maybe they employ 10 people, maybe there's more people. But when you look at it, ultimately, that makes up a, such a large chunk of the people in the United States and really all around the world in many cases, and they are getting hit so hard. I really want to stress that here clearly in this video. Now, they get into the details and so on. If you're interested, that's the number. To me, unbelievably shocking, and there's no way, there's absolutely no way that providing stimulus, as they say here, will actually fix it because the stimulus that was provided initially didn't fix their problem. Many people took the bailout and then they ended up going bankrupt. Many people took the bailout and now they need another one. And that's not going to fix it because they've got to pay it back. If they don't pay it back, that means you, the taxpayer, have to pay that back. So ultimately, someone's got to pay and either way, it hurts. So it's pretty funny when you calculate any of the statistics, particularly inflation, how completely off they are from reality. This article here from the Carson Report shows you the CPI is not matching up to reality. And by the way, I don't agree with CPI and the way that they measure it all and you know the stats you will see, but regardless. 
if actual house prices were used in the place of rents, core CPI would have registered a 3% gain in the past year, nearly twice of the reported gain of 1.6%. There we go. So even going by the statistics that they that they use, core CPI, okay, I don't agree with that measurement, but let's just use it just for this example and measure the prices of the homes, how they've been basically going straight up in the sky for many cities anyway, it depends on the city, but it would be 3%. Are they going to use the 3% to show you that, oh, remember that 2% target that the Federal Reserve has and that if we don't hit this 2% target, well, then we can still pump up the QE and keep the interest rates down? Well, of course course not. They are above that inflation rate, even using their own manipulated stats, but it just never seems to work out that way, does it? I'll finish off with this right here. Over half of US young adults live with their parents for the first time in the last 120 years. The majority of young adults aged 18 to 29 are now living with their parents. I personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with what people do as a personal choice, but if they have to live with their parents because of economic reasons, and here they say on the right hand side, economic instability has disproportionately affected young workers and many college campuses remain closed. Surely this is not a good sign because the houses are getting more expensive. The pays the pay is not going up. Wages aren't going up in the way that we see this here. And I have a really good belief that this is only going to get worse in time. Well, I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to learn about e-commerce, a skill that I believe everybody should have today, I'll teach you for free at the amazongps.com. If you want to know about the financial system, you want to understand how to actually have some solutions, how to deal with this crisis head on, get my two books at the link in the description. You can flip through them for yourself there. If you want the audio book instead, you can get that at themoneygps.com. And last but not least, have you seen this video? If not, I would highly recommend it. It's a face-to-face. -face. I normally don't do this type of thing, but got into some really good information. So definitely check it out and I'll see you there.